This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor in Texas Tech, CE3303, solids. Talking about shear and moment diagrams using the graphical method to construct them. Got an example here of a what I call a prop cantilever with a hinge in it. It's got a cantilever, fixed support at this end, hinge in the middle, roller support at E kind of drawn over it so it's hard to see. At this point I have a 500 foot-pound moment. At the hinge I have a 100 pound downward force and I have a uh, uniformly distributed load 25 pounds per foot starting here four foot from the hinge. First things I want to know to do a diagram is I need to do my reaction, solve for my reactions. Let's do a free body diagram of the right side call C, D, E. I've called my points A, B, C, D, and E. I have a little simply supported beam with reaction at this end, reaction at the support, roller support. This is at the hinge. Do sum of moments about point C. It's equal to zero. I have positive is counterclockwise for my moments. It's negative because it's the uniformly distributed load is trying to rotate clockwise. Negative 25 times 12 feet times its moment arm of 4 plus half of 12 or 6. Then I have the uh, reaction at EY which is a distance 16 feet so EY is equal to 3000 this number divided by 16 or 187.5 pounds up. Sum of forces in the Y obviously gives me the reaction at C in the Y direction. It's just 25 times 12, external applied distributed load force, plus my reaction at EY. CY works out to be 112.5 pounds. Now I want to do a free body diagram of the cantilever and apply the reaction from CY on the simply supported part CDE equal and opposite to the end of uh, the cantilever. At the left end of the cantilever I have a moment reaction, a vertical reaction. I have my externally applied 500 foot-pound force. I have my externally applied 100 pound force plus my reaction from C at the hinge. Sum in moments about point A is zero. I have the moment so at the support minus 500 because it's uh, uh, clockwise, minus 212.5, which is the sum of 100 externally applied plus the internal reaction at the hinge, 112.5, 212.5 times the moment arm of 16 feet. So, doing the math, rearranging, I get that the moment at the support is 3,900 foot pounds. It's positive there because it just happens to agree with the direction that I assume for the reaction. We'll talk about the real internal uh, direction in a second. Some of the forces in the Y obviously gives me that AY is 212.5 pounds up. Now I'm ready to draw my shear diagram. Draw a line, dimension it, and remember the rules of graphical shear moment shear and moment diagram construction. Concentrated force causes my shear diagram to jump in that direction by the amount of that force. So this support reaction counts as a concentrated force and so the shear diagram jumps up to 212.5 that reaction at AY. Then it, nothing happens on the load diagram. The slope of the shear diagram is equal to what's the value of the load diagram. Well, there is no force until I get to this 100 pounds force, so my shear diagram just stays flat at 212.5 all the way over to the hinge. The concentrated moment doesn't affect it, but at the 100 pound externally applied force, it causes my shear diagram to jump down by 100 from 212.5 to 112.5 nothing happens between there and the distributed load starting so my curve is flat 
Then I get to my distributed load. The slope of my shear diagrams the area is the value of the load diagram, so it's negative 25 point pounds per foot. So it starts sloping down negative 25 pounds per foot. So I'll show on a curve, it's a straight line, one degree curve. <clears throat> I see that it's going to cross the zero line at some point, and I want to know where that is. The change in the shear diagram is the area under the load diagram. So what I have in for my area of my load diagram is a little rectangle, height 25, base is x, the unknown dimension, and that's got to be equal to 112.5. So I set that 112.5 is equal to 25x, so x is equal to 4.5 feet. Now, my slope continues the same, negative 25 pounds per foot, on down to the end of the beam. And I sure would like for that to end up being 100, negative 187.5. I can check it by the change in the shear diagram is equal to the area under the load diagram. So it's the, the right half of this rectangle. This is x is 4.5, so the dimension to the to the right of it is 7.5, 12 minus 7 minus 4.5, times the height of the rectangle is 25. So 187.5 does equal to 7.5 times 25, so it checks out. My shear diagram closes, as we call it. Now I'm ready to move on to my moment diagram. Remember that a concentrated moment causes my moment diagram to jump in the direction of that concentrated moment. So let's think for a second about what this moment that I calculated is 3,900 pounds, 3,900 foot-pounds in the counterclockwise direction at that cantilever end at the uh, support. It's causing upward cupping, upward deflection of the beam, so that's one way of thinking about it. It's negative 3,900 pounds. If I draw a little free body diagram of it, and I'm looking at some point out here, I'm ignoring my reaction. I have negative 30, I have 3,900 pounds applied, foot pounds applied this direction. I want to assume my external moment at the right end of the beam. Here's my sign convention. Positive moment causes cupping upwards, cupping on the top surface, compression in the top fibers. So this is the same direction as this, so my moment has to be negative. So, I'm starting out at negative 3,900 foot pound, pound feet. Slope of the moment diagram is the value of the shear diagram. So it's a constant slope of 212.5 foot pounds per foot. So in 8 feet, my moment at point B just to the left of that 500 foot pound couple is going to be negative 3900, my starting point plus, because it's a positive shear, the area under the shear diagram. 212.5 times 8 feet works out to be negative 2200 foot-pounds. It was my moment there right before I get to that 500 foot-pound couple. The 500 foot-pound couple, if you'll look at it, is causing, trying to cause cupping on the top, compression on the top, cause it to hold rain on the top surface, so that's a positive moment in the way it affects the beam and causes internal reaction. So it causes my moment diagram to jump up from negative 2200 to 1700. I've shown that calculation right here. Now, at that point, nothing happens between here and the hinge, but my slope is still positive up 212.5, so I continue sloping up, still a one degree curve. This slope is the same as this slope right here, and the change in the moment diagram is the area under the shear diagram. So the area of this part of the rectangle is only is 8 times 212.5. So I'm starting at negative 1,700. What's that area? 212.5 times 
times 8 is 1700 or another way of looking at it is it's negative 3900 my starting point plus 212.5 times 16 plus my external 1500 my 500 foot pound moment concentrated couple does get me back to zero which is nice because I'm at a hinge and there can't there can't be a moment at the hinge continuing on I'm almost done I want to figure out my point at D my moment at D changing the moment diagram is equal to the area under the shear diagram it's going to continue to increase the slope is at 112.5 instead of 212.5 so this slope is now more gradual than the slope over here on this part of the curve. And the amount that it's going to go from zero up is 112.5 times 4 feet, the area under that port of the shear diagram. Shown that right here, zero plus 112.5 times 4 is positive 450 foot-pounds. That's the value there at point D. Now, Look at what happens to the slope of my moment diagram. It's, at this point D, it's 112.5, but it's gra gradually start decreasing to be positive to this point where I have zero slope, 4.5 feet from D, and then it's going to start sloping negative or down for the rest of, to the end of the beam. So what is that value? The change in the moment diagram is the area under the shear diagram. So from this 450 foot-pound force point, moment point, the change is going to be, it's going to continue going up, but by the area of this little triangle, which is 4.5 by 112.5. So it's 450 plus 1 half because it's a triangle. 112.5 is the height of the triangle. 4.5 is the base of the triangle equals 703.1 foot-pounds. I've tried to draw that here kind of small. Maybe you can't read it. My maximum moment is 703 and I call that the vertex of that curve. It's a two-degree curve because it's sloping. It's coming up from a one-degree curve. Finally, I have a check. My moment diagram should close to zero because at the end of that beam, that roller, I shouldn't have a moment. And I checked that 703.1 is equal to the area under this little triangle, part of the shear diagram. The area of that's one half, 187.5 times its base of 7.5 feet, which is just 12 minus 4.5. That does equal to zero, so it checks out.